Hey guys, how's it going? I hope everyone is having a great day. So this is kind of going to be a short video and it's definitely something different from what I'm used to doing, but I did want to bring you guys along the process of what it is exactly that I edit and how I edit. So uh, without further ado, let's get into the video. So the very first thing that I do would be calibration alongside uh, the exposure. So obviously if the photo needs to be uh, white balance properly then I would do that before anything right to make sure I get a solid foundation but in this case the photo is uh, balanced properly so we're going to go ahead and go into calibration now one thing to keep in mind with the calibration tool and most of your uh, color choices your co color palettes is that you want to make sure that your skin tones look natural now if you look into the blue primary we're going to go ahead and tweak it all the way to the left and you'll quickly see that your photo or at least the skin tones become very orangey so like if we back out obviously it's uh, too orangey right so uh, make sure you're not doing that first of all so i'm just gonna back it up to about uh, minus 25 and if we go zoom in to the face of the skin tones we're gonna go ahead and move the red primary next uh to the right so i'm not going to do it too much i'd probably put it at around 10 and then we're going to do a before and after so before after before after so just make sure that you're not uh doing any extreme uh, measurements especially in the calibration because this is the first step so <laughs> remember it's baby steps little by little it's always going to be better that way so Depending on the photo, sometimes I will lower the saturation of the blue primary. And in this case, I'm going to lower it just negative five. And I think I'm going to park it there. So if we zoom out and we go before, after, before, after, you can't really tell that I did much, which is exactly what you want to do layer by layer. We're going to go move into the basics tab. We're going to go ahead and start uh, building and making sure that our exposure is proper in every photo. Now, I do have quite a nice exposure already going on. I'm going to go ahead and brighten the exposure just a little bit. About 0.18 to the right. So we're going to park it there. We're going to go ahead and lower my highlights just a little bit. Negative 25. And we're going to come back to the basics tabs i'm actually going to go to the tone curve i'm going to raise my bottom line which is going to give me more of a faded matte look to the shadows and the blacks and then i'm gonna put a point right here i'm gonna make something subtle i don't want it too crazy um if you guys are experienced you guys know that I am making an S curve. So this is known as an S curve. Obviously you see the, the S right there. So it's kind of what we're doing. Um, we're just adding some contrast. I actually want to pull back on the highlights a little bit. Maybe something like something around right there. Um, actually less on the Okay, so that looks good to me. Now I'm going to be going back and forth from the basics tab and the tone curve tab. And that is because I don't always get it right. So this is just the starting point, you know, the, the tone curve. I'm building the S curve that I want. Uh, I do see that on the face, I could probably lower the highlights a little more. Not too much, because if you lower it too much, then it's going to look kind of kind of weird, unrealistic. Uh, we do want some of that splash in there so i'm just going to put it at around pretty much negative 50. we're going to go ahead and look at our shadows maybe raise them up a little bit not too much and as i raise them up i'm going to put it to 20. Uh, as i raise it up i'm going to lower my black just a little bit nothing crazy so let's go ahead and see where we're at so far so if i go before after before after uh, you see we're getting a nice build already. If we move down to the presence section, we have texture, clarity, and dehaze. So 
usually texture I only put anything from zero to plus five I don't really like touching it that much um, if I do it's gonna be because it, there's no skin tones in the photo so usually like for cars and buildings you can go ahead and hire the texture a lot more especially the clarity those two will help you get a more popular image but I don't like using them when there's people involved so I'm gonna go ahead and park it at five again it's not doing much it's just cleaning it's just sharpening it just a little bit and for clarity I'm actually gonna go minus three now let me show you what it does at the most extremes so that way you know kind of what to expect from the clarity tab and so if we go all the way to the left side you see everything gets soft everything gets like kind of creamy in a way you know <laughs> creamy so yeah obviously that looks horrible and if we go the other end to the right side that looks even more horrible so uh one thing i have noticed is people like to add clarity to the images and it just in my opinion uh, makes the skin look unpleasant so we're gonna go ahead and park it at negative three i think that's a good little soft spot to kind of give the skin and and the highlights a little bit of a glow not too much uh if we go into saturation i actually like to lower my saturation and higher my vibrance a little more oh actually a lot more what am i doing let's do 40 and let's do let's do negative 10. Okay, so if we go back and forth with the basics tab, um, you can see that with just the tone curve, with just the tone curve, it's very contrasty, and this is without any of my basics added. And then if we add the basics, you see I kind of softened it up a little more, kind of took out some of the contrast. Oh, one thing I do need to do is the contrast. I'm gonna go ahead and actually lower it to minus 10 uh i know this sounds counterintuitive i just feel like you get different contrast from the tone curve versus the contrast button you can go ahead and try either or i just prefer this method so to me also vibrance going back to vibrance and saturation vibrance reminds me of almost that as if it's adding saturation in a filmic look it doesn't it's not as harsh as saturation so that's why i like to lower a little bit of the saturation and bring up more of the vibrance uh, so that way you get maybe a little more of a filmic or or natural easing uh, saturation so where are we where are we oh uh before you guys flame me in the comments let's go ahead and make sure this photo is properly cropped and straightened yeah i forgot to do that actually so uh this one's going on instagram so we're gonna do four times five four by five and there's a few things to keep in mind sometimes it doesn't work with every photo and in that case i would just honestly leave it that way and figure it out later um, it might not even be a, a photo that gets posted on the story it might just be on the post or it might be vice versa it might be on the post not the story or whatever anyways uh for this case we're going to i'm going to show you two different ways so i'm going to put them kind of semi in the middle and as you see that doesn't look too good right so what we're going to do is we're going to actually make it as if it's a story so we're going to do 16 by 9 i feel like this would be uh, better used as a story just because of the format and the way that i shot the photo and if you see here his his eyes line up perfectly to the the rule of thirds line so that's uh, usually a good indicator that you're in a good spot so i'm just going to make sure it's lined up make sure his shoulders are exactly with those two lines kind of get them in the middle and as you see I would say I would say he's mostly in the middle. I know he is sideways. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and fix that with the level. So I don't do too much. I usually just level it out. And then go back and forth. Make sure everything's good. Uh, 
All right, so that looks good to me. We are getting back to... Oh, change that. We're getting back to the color mixer. Now, this is the HSL tab. Um, again, I'm hoping you guys uh, do understand this already. And if you guys don't, I can go ahead and make a video explaining everything in detail about Lightroom. I'm just assuming you guys know already. Getting into the hues. Uh, one thing I do like to do is turn my yellows into a little bit more of the orange. Again, if you do it too much, you're getting a very fall type of look. And for this photo, I'm not going to go for that. I'm going to go minus 40, around minus 40. Let's punch that in. So I'm going to go minus 40. I'm going to actually bring my greens to the right, but not too much. just want them a little more dark. So I'm actually going to put it at 30. Uh, I don't usually mess with the orange and the reds. The only time I think I do is when I'm doing more of a filmic look and usually like Polaroid and Portra 400. There, there's certain ones that they lean a little towards one end. So that's the only time that I'll really mess with the orange and reds just because those are the skin tones. And I don't like, again, messing with the skin tones so much. So uh, if we go into the aqua, aqua, we're going to leave the same. Uh, you can s slide it over a little bit. Uh, we'll do plus 20. But unless you don't unless you don't have any aqua, then you should be uh, good. Now, the blue, I'm actually going to do minus 20. You can go more extreme and you could get a real teal-ish look. But I think minus 20 is a good parking spot. My purples and magentas, I usually don't lean anywhere but there might be times again considering the photo maybe there's something that's magenta and it's popping out too much maybe i wanted to lean more red but for the most case we're gonna leave those there now for saturation uh the yellows i'm gonna lower to negative 15 the greens i'm gonna leave there the blues i'm gonna lower to 10 negative 10 and that's pretty much all i do now again Based on each and diff each and every photo, uh, the skin tones might be coming in a little too hot. Maybe they need some lower saturation. In this case, I kind of like where it's sitting, but sometimes I am aware of that because I'm adding a lot of contrast at times for my photos. Now, if we go into luminance, I don't really move anything from luminance, honestly. If anything, the greens, I do deepen them, so I maybe negative 30 and the oranges i might brighten up just a little bit plus five nothing crazy the blues maybe lighten up a little bit again it's preference and depending on the photo like there may, there might be some photos that the sky is in it and it is too bright so you need to bring down the luminance so that way you can get a little more of that deeper blue unless you prefer the wider blue then go ahead and do the wider blue but we're talking about my color grading palette. So we're pretty much done with the color mixer. So we're going to get into the color grading. I'm going to go into the individual tabs. And we are going to touch the shadows first. So um, for this photo, considering it's outdoors and it's during daylight time, I am going to lean the shadows towards the orange now i usually park it at 35 anywhere from 40 to 30 uh, in terms of the hue and saturation obviously we're not going <laughs> to leave it like that right so we're going to bring it down we're going to slowly bring it down i'm going to see what feels right and i kind of like it at 15 yeah yeah i'm going to leave it at 15 so the midtones I do not touch. I'm actually going to go into the highlights next. Now, the highlights, we're going to lean it orange too, but not too much. We're going to actually lean it a little bit yellow. We're going to go 55. And this one's real subtle. I'm actually going to bring this down a lot. So it's probably going to be like 10. Yeah, so I'm going to show you guys the before and after. So before, after, before, after. Now, obviously, the photo is more warm now. That's just the style that I'm going for. Again, the sunlight is out. This is around 4 p.m. So that's just something that 
uh, I'm thinking of doing. Now, if it was closer to blue hour, then I might lean them into the blues a little more. Maybe try to save the skin tones by adding some uh, orange into the midtones. But for this photo, in this particular case, we are pretty much done. I kind of like how it goes. Now we're going to do a before and after of everything in its entirety, right? So we're going to go before and after, before and after. So that is pretty much my process. Now it's kind of leaning a little too orangey. So I'm actually going to go to this, to the shadows and lean it down to like six. Yeah, that's good. I, I kind of like that. It's not anything crazy it's subtle gets the job done so sometimes for clients uh these would be like the last things that i kind of do uh, they might have pimples they might have things on their face um, usually guys are not that picky girls are a little more picky so j just keep that in mind in this case i mean he doesn't really have that many stuff but if he did i'll try to pick out a few things i'd go into the healing tab up here and make sure it's on content aware 100 percent opacity size i mean i have a scroll wheel so i could just move it from the size and i'm gonna go ahead and make it kind of small because i don't want to affect a huge area i'm gonna just get a little bit of his uh whatever these things are called i forgot what they're called and i'm just getting a little bit of stuff again you don't have to be too picky, uh, especially in this case. I don't have that much stuff that I need to worry about. So, yeah, there's not that much to do, uh, but just keep that in mind. You should definitely go through that and get those out because <laughs> they might not like it. And you're going to see it even more with a higher megapixel camera. For this photo shoot, I actually shot on the a7 IV and my 70 to 200 G master. So it's going to be very sharp and sometimes you're going to have to soften a lot of things up. I'd probably add a little vignette of some sort. Nothing crazy. I'm going to make it wide. I'm going to invert it. I'm going to make sure the face is in the middle. And I'm actually not going to lower the exposure because then it makes it look like a vignette. I'm actually going to lower the shadows and then a little bit of the highlights. Again, I'm doing very subtle things. Um, I don't want a crazy vignette. I'm just looking for something that kind of lowers, you know, a little bit of the outside of the, of the portrait. So if you can see, here's the, uh, the before and there's the after. Before, after. If there's anything you learned from today's video is that to make sure that you are taking care of the skin tones one thing that i would do a lot of in my beginning stages of photography was that i was doing these crazy color grades and my skin tones were not looking so good so if there's anything to keep in mind it's going to be that and with that being said this is the end of the video i do appreciate it if you guys like the video subscribe comment down below let me know what you guys thought about this whole process um this is the first time i've done it so of course i'm just gonna get better if i keep doing it and if there's a specific video you guys want me to make if there's a specific photo that you guys want me to edit or that you want to see edit it then I can go ahead and do that. I can also show you guys different styles of edit. Again, this is just like the majority for most photos that I like to do. This is the process that I like to do it. And I do appreciate you guys making it all the way to the end. With that being said, goodbye.